everybody so it's Jade and we're gonna do a quick little project together well it's actually not quick but we're gonna try and do it quick online if you hear noises in the background there's renovations going on in my house so please try to ignore it anyway um, we're gonna make some bottle cap charms so what you're gonna need is some images that are in a circle a one inch circle um, and these are just images I've had printed out like for years now that I need to get used up. So, um, and I print these on photo paper. You can use other types, but this seems to work well for me. This is the kind that I use. Let me move this stuff out of the way. And I'll link the materials that I use below if anybody's interested. Um, you'll, of course, need a one-inch hole punch. You'll need some Mod Podge. And, of course, bottle caps. You'll need a little paintbrush. A thin one like this should do. Um, a couple containers. This to, re to measure out your resin. I actually have measuring cups, but I can't find them at the moment. So, I just put this little line here. So, this is what I'm going to mix them both in. And... You'll definitely need some resin or epoxy, whatever people like to call it. I call it resin most of the time. Um, the kind I use for these for bottle cap charms is Envirotex Light. You can get it at Michael's. I think Hobby Lobby has it. Maybe even Joann's. I know AC Moore has it. So you can definitely use a coupon because it tends to be um, a little bit expensive. I think this pack is like $24.99. So definitely use at least a 50% off coupon. So, um, and of course you'll need something to mix it with. I generally just use a popsicle stick. So, yeah, now that we got our materials, let's go ahead and jump right into it. I may speed up parts of this that is redundant. And yeah, so let's go ahead. So, I am going to use this cute middle image here of the patisserie. And since Game of Thrones is coming up soon, I'm so excited. You guys excited for the new season? I'm going to pop this one out. Just says winter is coming. This is Stark Wolf. And of course, she has no I love my Harry Potter and Supernatural. So I'm going to pop Sam and Dean out over here. And the one that says mischief managed. Because I like the image. And I think that's all we're going to do. I'll set this one aside. Okay. Yeah, so next you want to get it down in your bottle cap, and that's where the Mod Podge and the um, paintbrush comes in here. So, what you're going to do is take your image and figure out which bottle cap you want it in. I already did that. This one I'm going to put in this cute little pink one, like that. Oops. And so, what I'm going to do is, first, I'm going to put some Mod Podge down at the bottom. And the reason you do this is you want to seal your images. So, I'm going to put a layer of Mod Podge over it. And I generally, generally do three layers. Because when, once you put your epoxy on, you don't want um, it bleeding through your picture. So, you definitely want to make sure you seal it good. And you can use different kinds of Mod Podge. I actually, sorry, I'm all off screen. I actually generally use the um, glossy one. But I can't find that right now. So we're just going to go with the matte. And yeah. And you're just going to let 
let it set it aside let it dry for like 10 minutes and you're gonna do that three times I do it three times just to make sure there's not an issue okay um, let's see winter is coming uh, let me just stick it on the back let's see Same deal. Seal your image. Now we're going to put holes in it because. We're going to turn these into like little keychains. Um, that may be next video. I'm not sure. But some people, I'm just saying it to say some people go ahead and pre-do their um, holes. I tend not to just in case the resin is higher than I put the hole. You don't want it running through it or whatever. So that's why I usually wait to put my holes. I'm not saying I always do, but... And we're going to put the Winchesters here. And this black one. Oops, here we go. And seal them up good. this was the step you do kind of want to make sure it's on there the winchesters are moving around a bit on me so you want to make sure it's in there and it's not really moving around <clears throat> all right and i said wait 10 minutes you generally want to wait 10 minutes but for the sake of this video, I'm going to go ahead and start the second round of sealing this image. Um, I think that, you know, during the course of this, I'm probably going to speed it up because I think you guys get the general idea of what we're doing here. Okay. So while that's still doing their little drying thing, we're going to go ahead and measure out and stir up our epoxy. Alright, so with this one, and you have to be careful with whatever resin or epoxy you're using. Make sure you read the directions because um, some of them have like a 2 to 1 ratio and some of them have others. 
I like this one because it's simple. It's a one-to-one -one ratio. So that means whatever you measure out for, um, let's see, there's hardener and the actual resin. So whatever you measure out for the resin is the exact same amount you want to res um, measure out for the hardener. Okay, so I am going to pour resin into this cup up to this line. Alrighty. And I'm going to dump that into my mixing cup. And some people have um, trouble with their resin doing right. Usually it's a matter of um, how they measured it. Okay, so just make sure you're getting the right measurements. And honestly, I'm hoping I'm doing it this time because, I, like I said, I usually actually have measuring cups that I bought online. Um, I will link that as well because to me that's easier to do it by the measuring cups than trying to do it by this but if I'm being honest I have like absolutely no clue where my measuring cups are right at this moment and yeah so and just try to get all the resin and hardener once you put it out out of the cup as much as you can get out okay and guys um, my suggestion is working with resin I've been doing it for a while and I really should have went in my thing and got my gloves um, but I don't have access to my storage room at the moment again because of the renovation and everything is in the way so Definitely, I would suggest wearing gloves. A lot of people would wear masks as well because they can't stand the smell of it. I honestly don't even smell it anymore, so I'm good. But, I mean, it is a chemical, so it's, it's suggested that you wear gloves and a mask. And if you get it on your skin, wash it off immediately, okay? So, I'm done with the resin. I'm measuring out the hardener now. Same deal. Just doing it up to the line. And, um, guys, it looks like my uh, epoxy is probably a little bit old because the resin's turned, well, the hardener's turned yellow. So I'm hoping it still works because I think they, some, some of them have expiration dates. I couldn't find one on this one, but we're just going to hope for the best here. I don't think anything's wrong with it. I've um, used it like this before and never had an issue. So, we're just going to hope that that's the case this time as well. Okay, so here I'm just getting all the harder out just like I did the resin. Again, just be careful, wear gloves, wear mask, don't um, get this on your skin, all that kind of good stuff, okay? I want you guys to be safe. Um, like I said, I've been, I've played around with resin for a while, so I kind of know my limits with it. And if you play with it for a while, you'll know your limits, but... Just be safe, guys, okay? So I'm done measuring it out, and what you want to do is stir. Um, <clears throat> you see how it looks cloudy now? You want to stir this up until all that cloudiness goes away, okay? So some people stir really fast or whatever. I just stir, honestly, it just depends on how I'm feeling that day. Um, I'm just going to stir normally whatever and we're gonna get that cloudiness gone so you want to stir into it's clear okay and you can see it starting to clear up now but it's gonna take a little and a lot of people try, some people try to stir really slow to avoid the bubbles personally I think you're gonna get bubbles regardless and um, there's a way to get rid of that to me I feel like an easy way um, there's other different ways you can use a heat gun. I'm gonna use 
sorry and I got this from the dollar store sometimes you need a longer one but I'm gonna use this little thing here to me the, this has been the most effective way for me to get bubbles out of resin um, some people blow us blow through a straw and get it out and some people use an actual like torch gun like there's different methods but this, this is the one that's gonna work for me okay so I'm just gonna stir until I feel like all those clouds are gone and once you finish stirring you want to let it sit for like two maybe two to five minutes not a whole lot of time and I mix up a whole bunch of like there's no there look we're not gonna need this much resin okay for these bottle caps like this is an extraordinary amount for this little bit but again my measuring cups are MIA so I just gotta work with what I'm working with all right. All right, I think that's good. And as you can see, you know, besides the yellowishness of the hardener, it's pretty much cleared up. It doesn't have that weird, filmy, cloudy like thing going on any longer so I'm just gonna let it sit for a couple minutes and marinate and that also helps like some of the bubbles dissipate if you just let it sit and then we're gonna come back and pour it into our um, bottle caps okay so I'll be right back guys alrighty guys I am back and we're gonna go ahead and pour this resin in. and like I said as you can see those bubbles that were there before some of them dissipated and got a little smaller whatever so we're gonna pour and yeah let me see maybe I should try to zoom in a little bit all right can y'all see a little better now yeah I'm not exactly the most coordinated person all right and as long as you're on a flat surface, guys, epoxy is self-leveling. Leveling. So you don't have to do too much. And it will do its own thing. Like, it will do its job. It will level out the way it needs to. You don't really have to disperse it um, that much, okay? Because it, it eventually, it'll just go where it needs to go. where it, It'll fill in where it needs to fill in, okay? Let's see. I think that's good. Yep, that's good for all of them. Like I said, see, wait, look how much we have left. Way too much epoxy I mixed up. But anyway... So, just watch that, guys. And what you want to do here is... You see the bubbles? And some of these... I'm trying to get it without sticking it on the epoxy there, because it'll stick. I'm going to try to zoom in a little more. Alright. Let's see move these up and I can do this okay you see some of the bubbles what you want to do is oop, yeah I don't want my finger there so I'm gonna set it down and actually this too is probably just a little too short for this because you really don't want to be in here burning your hands up so I actually have a longer one for this thing and this is actually the one I usually use I don't know why I thought I was going to use that other one so because you don't want to be burning yourself here so basically just run over the top of that and the bubbles will just dissipate I love it. this is like one of my favorite parts I love to see those bubbles disappear when you run that that flame over top of it something a little soothing about seeing them go away yep so 
I'm going to look a little closer, make sure we got all of them. And we did. And I'm just doing it a quick swipe again for good measure. Yep. All right. That's it, guys. Like, well, for this part, we're done. Like, now that epoxy, I usually, I mean, it'll probably dry, be dry um, in a shorter period of time. Um, but I like to let them sit overnight for at least 24 hours, okay? Um, but it's probably going to be 24 hours when I come back, but it'll be very close to it. So that's it for this part. All you want to do now is put them on a board, sit them somewhere where they won't be disturbed and they can sit flat and sit them to the side and just leave them alone. Um, what you also want to do is get something, some kind of plastic case, something that can cover them up so you don't get like dust particles in your um, project. So I have a little plastic thing that I usually use. I can't find it, so I may just use like... Um, I may use this. I don't know. I'll, I think I may know where it's at. But anyway, you want to use just you want to just use something to cover it up so you're not letting dust in it. Okay. So that's it for this part of it. If you have any comments or questions, guys, leave them below. Come back. Sorry, I'm um, knocking a whole bunch of crap off my desk at the moment. I'll come back and once it's dry, and we'll pop the holes in them. And like adds a little keychain part. Okay, so that's it, guys. Have a good one, and I'll see you in the next part. Bye. Hey, everybody, it's Jade. I'm back with the second part of um, getting our bottle cap charms together to make into keychains. Um, and I have a few different types. So I have this cute little band here. Um, I have a couple ball chains and an actual like keychain ring so you can see kind of the difference in what they look like so what you'll need is some um, keychain type of your choice um, some needle nose pliers or just anything like these these type of tools just because it's easy to get to for me I use these it's easier to get the jump rings open and close with them um, you'll need jump rings course your projects um, and then um, one of these little doohickeys and it just this tip here just punches the hole through the metal very fairly easily and you can get these anywhere I've seen them at Michaels Joanne Hobby Lobby um, AC more all the craft stores. I'm not sure if I've ever seen them in Walmart or Target any place like that But definitely all the craft stores. I've seen them in and of course guys Use a coupon if it's not already on sale. So the first thing that you're gonna do is Take your um, thing once they're all dried up and punch a hole Really anywhere you want to but of course I mean it makes sense to just punch it in the top so you have your hole there. Hole there. Let's get Sandine punched here. Let's see, it just goes smooth right through that, um, what do you call this thing? Bottle cap. Alright, so we got our holes punched. Now you just want to open your jump rings. And again, I said I'd like to use these bad boys like this because I'll be trying to open them with my fingers sometimes and just be tearing all my little nails up. And ain't nobody got time for that. Can y'all see that? Like, is it in focus? I'm just, I apologize if it's not, but it's, I think you can uh, figure out opening and closing up a, a jump ring. You know what I'm saying? Like, so we're going to stick. Oh, come on now. What are you doing? All right. Through there. Right? Got that jump ring done. 
and close her up. And basically, I'm gonna do a thing here. Now, when I used to make these, I actually used to get really fancy with them. I can close this ball part, and I would like actually add like um, what do you call it? Little dangly things from the bottom, and I'll try to find a picture and insert it so you can see what I'm saying. So if anybody's interested in knowing how to do that, I can do that. But if not, then I won't worry about it. So. But yeah, see, here's your first one on a ball chain. Good to go. Um, and actually, this one, I'm going to need to pull some chain out to put on it. So, I might have to pause this for a second just to do that. Sorry, guys. I'm all out of the frame here. Anyway. Close that back up. And we're going to put Samadine on a ball chain too, just because I think they're a little more gritty. So ball chain it is. And this one will be this cute little purple string thing. And I got these, I got like a whole hoard of these bad boys off of Amazon and these as well jump ring, all that kind of stuff these ball chains i got off amazon i'll link all that below but it's been like some time since i bought that stuff but yeah i bought it all off amazon and even the bottle caps like the silver ones i got like a ginormous um oh i'm putting it on the wrong one see guys not even paying attention um, i got a ginormous bag of those off of amazon as well i think i got this nut enough there we go. sticking it through the hole there this one's extra simple because you just clip it on sorry keep getting out of frame here boom and I like these cute little strings. They just make it seem so dainty. And I like this thing. It's kind of girly. Whatever. But, I mean, these strings come in all sorts of colors. Like yellow, light blue, black, green. Anything you can think of. And so now we're going to need some chain for this. So let me go get that and I'll be right back. Alright, I'm back and I have this length of chain. So we're just going to cut off a few links. And for that, I usually use my wire cutters. And for if for whatever reason I can't get my wire cutters to work properly, what is that? Ink. Okay, yeah. Um, I will use my uh, Tim Holtz scissors because them bad boys cut through damn near anything. So let's see. I think this is sufficient. So let's cut that off. And again, these are just wire cutters. And these tools came in a set. I can link a tool set if you need. But you can get one cheap, again, at the craft stores. Yada, yada, yada. Um, Walmart sells them. I've seen them there. So, it's not anything, like, hard to find or hard to buy. Sorry. Keep for, I keep trying to do it on camera and keep getting off camera with it. Anyway, I got it through the hole here, as you can see. Alright? And so then we're also going to want to put this chain here. Alright. And actually, we're going to need one more jump ring to go there. So we can... I'm on camera. Look. See? Doing it again. Off camera. Boom. Alright. Boom. Alright. 
Hopefully we can keep these together long enough to get it closed up. Ha! Finally. Mischief finally managed, man. That was a lot of mischief. Anyway, so that, guys, will complete this project. So we got those, and then we got the two on the ball chains. And this is all my favorite stuff, pretty much. You got Supernatural, you got Game of Thrones, you got Harry Potter. See? All I needed was for this to be like Outlander or Vikings or something. Anyway, that patisserie is really cute. So, that's it for this, guys. I'm rambling, so you all have a good one. And, again, I'll pop that picture in if you hadn't already seen it. And if anybody's interested in learning the dangly part ones, let me know. If not, then, hey, we can skip it and keep it moving. If you guys have any comments or questions, then definitely leave those below. If you're new to this channel and you like this video, consider subscribing, liking, and hitting the bell icon to get all the notifications of when I post. And that is it for me, guys. I'll catch you in the next video. Talk to you later. Bye.